Have you been blessed already? Okay. Um, uh, for me, I thank God for the day, you know, uh, our paths crossed. I've had over the years, <laughs> when you've been in ministry for 30 years, you've had many people, you know, cross your pulpit. But it's not everybody that has been through that has remained. And, you know, I just thank God for what God is doing with his life, through him, his consistency, his focus. And, and when I say focus, not just focus about success and ministry, focus on re remaining, remaining focused and calibrated on God's agenda as revealed through scripture. You know, I've watched his life over the last few years and, and you know, I, I call him every night and again. And you know, sometimes I, I even just text him to just harass him a little and say, hey, hey, hey I've seen this, <laughs> you know, because I, I actually have a real care for him, a love and a deep care for, for him and what God is doing with him. He's one of those people that, you know, I know is going to be around for many years to come. Amen. And we, we know that the, the enemy will not be able to defile him, Amen. distract him, destroy him. He will not fail, he will not fall, he will not falter. You know, we met up yesterday. <laughs> we didn't know, you know, when you are, when you are with like minds, time flies. To the point where the, where the person at the restaurant said, we've closed. <laughs> come and be going. We now went to look for another restaurant. They said, we have closed here too. We went to another restaurant. We begged them. We said, please, open for us. We we'll just drink drinks. <laughs> and then, you know, I was so engulfed in the spirit of what we were talking about. And I, the very interesting thing happened to us. It happened to me. I called a, a, his, his car, his taxi. When it came, I said, Please, I need to take a ride with you. Please just drop me up the road. Yeah, do you understand? <laughs> and we continued our talk. I wasn't even there. I said, yeah, just, my house is just up the road. Yeah, just, just drop me. And we continued talking, continued talking, continued talking. When we got home, as I just entered the driveway, what did I see? Ah, the car is not there. <laughs> I left my car. <laughs> I left my car in the place. I forgot I drove there. Part of it is my wife's fault because I drive my wife's car and I'm used to, I'm now the Uber man. So in my mindset, I've forgotten that uh, that day I had harvest. I had access to the car. I left, they had to drive me back to the place. And I, and I, I, I said, I was literally in the spirit. It's better to forget your car than to forget your destiny. Oh Let's put our hands together for Apostle Arome Osai. of God, I was invited for Supernatural Shift 2020, and um, I thought I was a guest minister, but um, God used that to connect me with someone that I um, recognize as a mentor, a mentor, deep and experienced uh, in the ways of the Lord. So I'm not here um, as a guest minister, but uh, as a student of the life of God's prophet. Hallelujah. Amen. I was still in a functionary in the oil industry in Nigeria when I came here. And the implication of the shift, you know, this is the shift pool. <laughs> when I got on board the shift pool, that was my journey away from uh, that sector into full-time full minister. I just couldn't fit in again. I tried. I tried, but 
So the shift was more for me. Um, I preached in the conference, but the, there was uh, this tsunami of grace that was available designed to occasion migrations. And uh, I became a victim of this tsunami. I was supposed to write an examination that will qualify me to be admitted into the management cadre of our system in Nigeria. And uh, by God's good grace, I don't fail ex examinations. But God did not allow me to write. Two weeks before the examination, he said I should resign. So a lot of things, uh, I experienced fractures, all kinds, but it was the locomotive towards the shift. And today, I believe in the spirit of the shift conference. And we are going to glide a little more, I believe. <laughs> and I believe that that tsunami will hit some lives and dislocate you to relocate you appropriately in the name of Jesus. I want to salute Pastor. Thank you again for the privilege. Um, the hospitality has been, uh, you know, I'm a simple preacher at the backside of the wilderness, but I've had first class treatment all the way from Nigeria to this place. Uh, <laughs> it's obvious that excellence is the spirit of the Liberty Church, and you may wish to know that I'm, I'm a member of the... Of, of the <laughs> Hallelujah. So we'll, we'll, we'll just pray and then, oh, maybe this man will need to help us because we are going far. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. We celebrate you. And we thank you for the supernatural shift 2022. And we ask, oh God, that it might please you to unleash that tsunami again so that the lives of men might be relocated into the context of possible fulfillments in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, let the fountain of the great deep be open. Let the windows of heaven, oh my God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I see in the spirit, I see three cloven tongues of fire. There are three prophets that must be activated this night. There are three prophets and the fire comes on you as I speak. The fire comes. The fire comes. Oh, 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 oh. The Lord calls this house the house of prophets. Yes, the house of prophets. Asimole ikos kabola ima baratos iba meni keta hasakubre mahabriaske kofoli mante kuria balama. I see a woman, a woman, an intercessor. You've been laboring. You've been laboring. You've been laboring, but it's as if that which you've been praying about, you've not seen any significant change. God is saying it's because of your rank. And today he's coming to anoint you so that your rank can change. Oh, and the grace comes so strong. I sense it. I sense it so strong. I sense it so powerfully. Amino Selina Habres. Kafote Mazuria Mahalatami. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a, a pair of spectacles. A pair of spectacles. And, and I thought it was about someone that uses spectacles that we need to see. But it's about someone that God wants to make a seer. He wants to make you see through his lens. And the anointing comes upon you. The anointing comes upon you. It comes stronger. It comes, oh my that thou wouldest rend the heavens and come down 
we call upon your name. Que salico bros que falama is kamai to ke bosame. I see a sign. I see a sign in the spirit. And from the sign that I see, it is obvious that there is someone in the congregation. Uh, one of your ears has is almost losing hearing. One of your ears. One. What I mean is that one ear hears better than another ear. So if you are the person, just give me a wave. One of your ears. All right, so this is what you do. If this is the ear that has lost, that is losing hearing, use this finger, put it inside. Jesus said that I should leave the way so that he can heal someone's ears. That's what he said. And so, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bind the spirit of deafness. Deafening spirit be bound in the name of of Jesus be bound yeah thank you Lord so put remove it and put use this one now to block the one that hears if you are close to them just help me check if the hearing has been restored quickly quickly help me check if the hearing has been restored just you wave if the hearing has been restored just wave to me okay Restored? All right. If the hearing has been restored, wave. We have one, one, one there. Restored. Yeah? All right, so that one there, okay, hearing restored. If the hearing has been restored to you, come, come here just now, quickly. Come here now, come here now. Come here now. Um, now the reason why I asked you to come out is not to show the congregation that I'm such a great preacher it is because this is the sign that God gave me that I'm, I will meet someone and he's going to heal the ear and that's how I'm going to know oh my oh my so the anointing comes upon you the one that the Lord spoke to me about he said I'll meet someone He's going to heal the ear and then he's going to release an anointing that will break a yoke. So the anointing that breaks yokes, it will descend upon the person that I'm talking about. It will come strong upon you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. It will come strong and that yoke will be taken from you. That yoke will be broken. It will be broken. Say so that's how we know you because he will heal you. So let the yoke break. Sapole nai kapande si ruke ma sabarana ti alambo ina sokle bre la mis aha yes thank you father thank you father thank you father thank you father in the name In the name of Jesus. So now I see the angel of the Lord. The angel just walked in now. Piramo siko bresko filama. And I'm seeing someone that lost a job, lost a job, and uh, things are, are not so good for you at the moment you are going to have two jobs two job offers and these two job offers will be much better than the one you lost thank you Lord in Jesus name you are released so just leave that lady there the, that's uh, Jesus clinic it will it'll keep going on until she's good you may sit God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. If you came with a, your Bible, I want to invite you to turn to the book of Acts, chapter 12. Because of the intensity 
that is in the atmosphere, you will forgive me if this message doesn't come to a logical conclusion, you know. If, if, we, can't, if we can't find how to end it. Um, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Mm. All right, let's just try for maybe for a few minutes, then we might need to continue um, what the Holy Spirit just started, Acts chapter 12. And I'm, I was, I've been instructed to speak on the subject breaking from a season of darkness. Breaking from a season of darkness. We want to shift from a season of darkness into a season of light. And, and they are, they, that's a technology, there's an approach that must be engaged if we are going to experience that shift from darkness. And my reference for this journey will be the book of Acts chapter 12. Now about that time, I, I want to draw your attention to um, the way this chapter of the Bible opens up about that time. It's... Uh, it's it's an it's it's about a season. It's it, it's it's revealing a season, and and the context of this season is that Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex setting of the church. It was about that time. It was contained in Satan's policy for a season. So it was a time of darkness. Now someone might ask. Because I'm well aware that we are people of faith, we are men and women of faith. And someone might ask, hey, pastor, what are you talking about? I'm talking about seasons of darkness. Um, if you wait long enough, night, night will come. Yes. <laughs> That's how, it's not as if we have lost our faith, okay? We are just trying to give you skills, some soft skills that will help you migrate. Because what we are saying is night will come and there are a few reasons, scriptural reasons for which night seasons darkness comes. One of such season reasons is in the book of Matthew chapter 4. Don't worry, I'll come back to the reading. Just trying to justify the topic first because I know that uh, some of us are faith people and you, you don't want to identify with darkness in any form and fashion. You are the light and all of that. I've heard that before. But just stay with me. Stay tuned. Uh, uh, the Bible talks about the potential of all scripture. It's designed for a few things, all right? Not some scripture, but all scripture. In the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 1, we see Jesus going through a compulsory season of darkness. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. The objective of his going into the wilderness was so that he can be tempted. Now, the context here, are you, are you still with me? Before this temptation came, you would notice that Jesus was by the waters of Jordan and he was baptized by John. And the baptism was the strategic requirement to reveal his true identity. Because the moment he came out of the water, the alignment of heaven was troubled and the Holy Spirit came upon him, descended upon him like a dove. And his identity was revealed by the accredit accreditation of the Father. This one is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Uh, so Satan had been looking for him. But because of the proclamation that God gave, his identity was revealed. If you go to the book of 1 John chapter 5, you will see how the real Jesus was revealed. He was revealed uh, on three levels. One was by the water, which is John the Baptist baptismal service. One was by blood, which was what happened when he was upon the cross and his blood touched it. I don't want to go into that. So he was revealed by water, and that's John the Baptist's baptism. As he came out, there was a testimony that came from heaven 
because he was a citizen of heaven. Only heaven could reveal who he was. And when he came out of water, God spoke and said, this one is my beloved son. Instantly, the Holy Spirit came hard pressed upon him and led him into the wilderness. And the reason for which he was led was so that he can be tempted of the devil. Now, if Jesus, do you know how glorious it was for him to receive accreditation from heaven? There were so many people that came there for baptism. And there were various measures of blessing that came through John the Baptist's ministry. Some people came and repented and now made up their minds to follow God. So all kinds of things were taking place. But it was only one man that came there that the Spirit of God descended upon and that his identity was revealed by a testimony that came directly from heaven. That was a great moment for Jesus. But instantly after that revelation, he was dispatched into the wilderness for compulsory testing. So one of the reasons for which we might enter into seasons of darkness is testing. Testing. I'm, I'm just trying to bring the faith people into the economy of this emphasis. Testing. There's something called testing. This is not a test that um, you will need to go through in form of a, a, an interview that human beings put together. I'm talking about a test that the spirit comes to test you. When, when the spirit is testing you, the context is different from a mortal human test. It's a time of darkness. Because Jesus knew you, the, the nature of that test and the, the possibilities that are bound with that test, he decided not to eat. The decision to fast was not part of the contract of the mission. He was going into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil not to fast. His fasting was hmm, his own strategic response to the kind of thing that he is about to encounter in that place. Are you still with me? Uh, so, we have a season of darkness that came. If you write the Mestis Benz, uh, Mestis Benz E-Class came to pick me from the hotel this evening. So, I've studied a lot about Mestis Benz. In fact, I didn't want the ride to end. It was, it was a cruise. Now, on the Mestis Benz car, you have 10,000 points where they welded it. 10,000 points. On the Mercedes-Benz car, the, before it can be called Mercedes-Benz engine, it must have run on the bench for 1,000 hours. That's a company-based test to, you know, to see if that engine meets their own company quality. But what Jesus was going to encounter in the wilderness was not a company-based test. It was an outsourced test to devils. <laughs> oh, you are, you are not with me. <laughs> to demons. And, and there, is no, there is no understanding where they will come from. If it's a com company-based test, it's a control test. Okay, we are testing for tensile strain, tensile stress, capacity. Do outsource. Go and be tempted by the devil. I don't want to take you go deep. I'm just trying to show you possibilities that can occasion seasons of darkness. And because in the situation of a test, God's endorsement is behind that test. So, the devil has authority. I know you don't, you don't, uh, you are not with me. He has, he has authority to run that test according to his own specification. And God would not put you up for a test if he doesn't know that the capacity of what he has built inside of you surpasses anything that the devil can throw at you. So if you see the kind of test that God can allow around your life, it is suggestive of how you have attained before him. Because he is the regulator of temptation. The Bible says that he will not allow you to be tempted more than you have the capacity to bear. And yet in that temptation, he will be expecting you to stay sensitive because he's going to make a way of escape. So, so, so he regulates the temptation. He regulates what comes to Darion, what comes to, to Henry, what comes to, to, to Davis. He knows your frame, your capacity, what you can bear, what you can survive. The season of darkness. I pray that our eyes will be open in the spirit to be able to see the way of escape that he has made available. 
Second reason for the season of darkness is um, a time, a time where uh, uh, a season of darkness can be a result of issues that are obtainable in the courts of heaven. And that's the story of Job. The thing, the operating system behind what came upon him took place in heaven. And Satan was allowed as a guest to come discuss Job. It was a meeting for the sons of God and all the sons of God came and they were there. Satan was also available. And then it was as if God forgot the agenda of the meeting and put Job on the spotlight. It was as if his conversation with Job became, was the real reason for which the meeting was called. So there are issues that go on in the courts of heaven. Sometimes God is bragging about you. Sometimes he wants an accelerated promotion, so he needs to bring Satan. Stay with me. Just stay with me. Stay with me. Sometimes God might want to facilitate an accelerated promotion in your life, so he invites Satan quickly. Say, hey, can you come? Oh, there's somebody here. <laughs> And you know, Satan is bad on Monday, bad on Tuesday, bad on Wednesday, bad on Thursday. So he will come with accusations. He comes, say, ah. he, he doesn't have any good thing to say about you. So when, when he stands before God, he now brings his data. Notice that Satan did not need to reach out to a data bank to bring out Job's profile. Right on the spot, he brought, and he also revealed his oscillatory motion of how he has been walking up and down to and fro the earth. So he, had, he passed your house, passed your office, passed your compound. He has your data. So the moment he receives authority from that layer, he knows what to do, where to touch. Seasons of darkness. Hey, hallelujah. I know you don't like darkness, but you see, if you, if you, if you, if you stay long enough, the day will go dark. The day will stay long enough. And there are a lot of things that God achieves through these seasons. One of which is, is a, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's an avenue for God to build stature in the lives of his people. When you see someone growing in the spirit, know that he contends with so many things. And the way God even designed it is that even the things he has secured for us in the spirit are not automatic. Because Jesus died for the whole world. If, if it were automatic, that would have been something to implement in the Middle East, implement salvation in the Middle East. But you need to do something to enter into the economy of grace. God has already destined you for something, but he said, begin to contend with, for battle. With them in battle so that you can enter into the things that God has ordained. Are you, are you still with me? I know you don't like battles. You want, you want to just stay, then you are not ready for the real life. Because the day of half measures and talk is over. We are at the end of days and light and darkness will, will just be different by a very thin line. Number three. One of the reasons for which a season of darkness might come uh, can also be an outright illegal intention of the devil to bring a barricade around your life. Outright. Illegitimate. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. So in view of the above, we have justified my topic that even if you are praying, darkness will come. If you are fasting, went to preach somewhere. There's a place in Nigeria called Gwakwalada. So, um, so many people have prophesied to us. We had, we, had, we had two children and we were good with two children. We had stopped everything about giving birth and all of that. And then senior ministers began to call me, saying, you are in error. God has given you more children than you have. Hey, what was that? And then you go here, you see another senior. This, the senior ministers I'm talking about are people that have worked with God for so long. You need to have a good reason 
not to listen to them. So, and my wife had been saying, uh -uh. Just... <laughs> So we now decided to have a child. So she took him. I went for a crusade. I went for that crusade. I was so powerful in the crusade. Jesus, so powerful in that crusade. I finished preaching the second night and the demons were casted out there went to fight my wife. Because she had a dream and saw this creature with four horns and attempting to ram at her womb. She removed the first horn, removed the second horn and then she, third horn, it was one horn left and then she woke up. So it means it's inconclusive. And in spiritual things, when you have something that is inconclusive, <laughs> make sure you don't conclude your spiritual work. May the Lord give you understanding. Yeah. So it was inconclusive. And then um, 30 minutes after the inconclusive dream, she began to spot, and that was how we lost that child. She, they were wheeling her into the theater when she called me faintly as if she was going to die. And she said, whatever you do, don't come back. Go for that crusade. Go for that crusade. So in the name of my wife, I went that, that day. <laughs> but you know what? As powerful as the crusade was, we lost that child. Well, no need to tell you of what God told me when I went to inquire. Why, why is this? I, I've been running along for your name. And I know you have enough power reserved in your arm to avert this situation. All right? So no need to bother you with what he told me. It was a time of darkness. I, I, I was not the one carrying the child, so it was easy for me to move on. But uh, the one that was carrying the child, in fact, my wife didn't talk for like some days. Jesus, I had to. Now, the prayer point changed. I had to start praying for her and all of that, and before the Lord now. So it, it was not a, it, we didn't choose that that season would be like that. But it came, even though we were serving a living God. Are you with me? So what this session is about is to give us insight into how to manage those seasons and actually how to migrate through them into the potentials that that passage creates. So let's go back to our scripture of interest. Haven't justified the topic. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand, hands to vex setting of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because it saw, he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unliving bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer, somebody say prayer, prayer. was made without ceasing. They didn't say, he didn't say prayer was prayed. He said prayer was made just like you make a, an atomic bomb, you make a weapon. Prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, rise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands and the angel said unto him, Heed thyself and bind on thy sandals. So did he. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him. And whilst not that it was true, which was done by the angel, 
but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and the second word, they came onto the iron gate that leaded to the city, which opened to them of his own accord, and they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. Seasons of darkness. One of the indicators of uh, the season of darkness is when you find untimely deaths of people that are related to you. It's an indication. It's a sign. The Bible said that they took James and killed him with the sword. Uh, as an intercessor, as a watchman, there are several indications, several things that suggest that darkness is beginning to gather momentum. As a watchman, there are things that you need to set your gaze upon, one of which is bets and debts. If you study your Bible, you will see that many bets coincided with God's prophetic agenda. In fact, when he said that the Lord himself will show you a sign in the book of Isaiah chapter 9, it was about a bet. A virgin shall conceive, a virgin shall bring forth a son. Bets. You see, and debts, especially when they are untimely, is suggestive of the fact that there is an economy of darkness that is trying to spread itself around you. The Bible says that Herod, he rules, he stretched forth his hands, and the purpose of stretching forth his hand was to vex setting of the church. So there are times when Satan stretches forth his hands to vex people in the house of God. I'm still in one now. I'm still in one. Before I came here. Oh, you must have sought. Okay, let me, let me. How did it start? Went to preach in Cameroon. The hand of God. You know, God is the one that normally starts this thing. So, <laughs> hand of God was strong. All kinds of things were taking place. And my hotel room was overlooking the Atlantic Ocean. Right? So they felt, oh, you like this view. I said, if you are a spiritual man, you will know that the reason why you were kept there is for warfare. When I came back, I, you, you may not believe something, so no need for me to go into those details. I have a gift. I'm a seer. All right? So when I came back from the crusade the second night, there were spirits that were suspended on the water, trying to gain entrance into my room. But they couldn't come to land. And I was asking God, open my eyes so that I will see what is restraining these wicked spirits. Because while we were on the crusade, the power of God came upon the lady and the demon began to speak. I said all kinds of things that you are dead. You are even right now you are dead. <laughs> Normally, what happens is when they say that, I laugh. <laughs> First, that is, I generate. Laughter first. That's my first reaction. And that thing, please, anything that is talking, the thing will stop talking. Then I cast it out. So they, they promised that they were going to kill me. I went back to my room and I saw spirits suspended on the water. So when I asked God to open my eyes, I now saw the angel that was restraining them. Oh! You might not know how real the spirit world is. It's more real than this one. This one cannot, it can last forever. Even if you leave it by itself and there's no Ukraine war, this one will disintegrate by itself. Because God never built this civilization on true foundations. He built it on water. If you know anything about civil engineering, uh, you need dry land, table land, to build anything that will last. If you are going to reclaim land, there's a possibility that the water will... He built this one on water. That's why if you dig deep enough, you'll find water. It's a civil engineering flaw that suggests that this civilization is not a continuing country. I saw the powers of the kingdom of light restraining those forces. And they were there till 3 a.m. Oh, many of you will go out and do something, maybe pray for some people, and then you come sleep. That's not how it is done. When you finish praying for people, you come out. Don't sleep 
earlier than 2 a.m. I'm telling you the way of the warrior. Because where our ministry is, is where witchcraft, rich, witchcraft is the culture. You know people have culture. The culture of where our ministry is, the people, is witchcraft. So I can tell you a thing or two about how to position yourself for victory. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. So we finished from Cameroon and came back home. And I started feeling the atmosphere was tense. I knew that Satan was trying to. Uh, and when you feel that the atmosphere is tense, what you do is drink prayer like water. Drink it on the streets. Drink it in the office. Leave your deck sometimes. Go to the restroom and... It's a mocha. <laughs> If after two days you still feel that the darkness is around, call your friends that are intercessors to, to join forces with you. That's how we do this thing. Don't ever stand alone. If you go beyond two days and it's not going, reach out. It means that um, the, the warfare is forged by a conclave. There, there's more than one person involved. So you will need more than one person in the solution. So we started praying, all kinds of prayer. Before I started the trip to Abuja, we had prayed for seven hours. Yes, we had prayed for seven hours and there was a release. So when I woke up in the morning, there was a little danger. Then it left. That means something will happen, but it's not a significant thing. I said, let's go to Abuja. So while we're now going on the way to Abuja to take the flight to come to London, a tanker that was full of petrol, 40,000 liters, now the brake failed. And it was a slope. So you didn't need the running engine to kill us. The reason why I'm alive today is because God sent his angel. And he, he used, the tanker used us to, to stop. With that weight, he used, my bends was what stopped the tanker. So the physical way of explaining why we are still alive phys physically is that we had luggage in the boot. So the luggage, the thing couldn't break. That's the physical way. But I know the spiritual side. Let me ask you, we prayed for seven hours. How come the tanker still because it was orchestrated from the realm of the spirit. Alright? And then the reason why Meanwhile, Satan did not arrange that just to bash my car. I hope you know. <coughs> that was not the intention. <laughs> that was not the intention. He arranged it. The vengeance was strong. My wife was at the back. Pastor Philip was at the back. Um, my wife's PA at the back. My daughter at the back. I was sitting in the front. Then the driver was this way. So imagine. Meanwhile, in our own intercession at home, one of our people at home saw three graves. He said, Pastor, I see three graves, fresh. And there were three people at the back. It was already, it was already sealed in the spirit realm. A day before I traveled, the voice of the Lord came to me and said, send, I, I know most of you don't know what Naira is. It's a kind of money, all right? <laughs> <coughs> the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost came and he said, send one million naira to your father-in-law. So I, I said, so when the crash took place and I came out of the car, he said, this is why I asked you to send one million naira to your father-in-law. I said, I don't understand. Then he now quoted that scripture. Honor your father and your mother. Yeah. That your days may be long. So if, <laughs> you are not with me. So, so, you mean if I didn't send that money? That was the principle God was activating. That was what he activated to provide the infrastructure for my deliverance. It was in that scripture and obeying the voice of God. So, if we are talking about migrating from a season of darkness, I assure you, I know a little about it. And that's not the first accident I've had. I've had worse accidents. Sometimes you, you drive the car thereafter like a bicycle. 
Are you still with me? <laughs> I say, if you are still with me, say, Amen. Amen. That's a sign. A sign that darkness, untimely death. When you begin to see it around, don't sleep. Wake up. So he killed James. And then the second sign is captivity, unreasonable captivity. Unreasonable captivity. You begin to see it around, it's suggestive of a season of darkness. I don't know what kind of captivity you have been in. Your part of the reason this conference was set up was to ensure your migration comes to pass. In the name of of Jesus Christ. So the Bible says that the response of the church when Peter was apprehended was that they began to make prayers. Now, making of prayers, that's our strategy. And they made it without ceasing. All right, let's do something quickly. Something quickly, then I will tell you one or two things. This is what I found as an intercessor. Someone give me Acts chapter 2 verse 15, another person give me Acts chapter 3 verse 1, another person give me Acts chapter 10 verse 3, another person give me Acts chapter 10 verse 9. These scriptures that I asked us to open are scriptures that revealed moments where something from God's realm came into our own realm. Right? So I want us to do an investigation of the timing. Is that clear? You know, while I was in the oil industry, we did a lot of, we, we brought a lot of cargo on uh, vessels, on tanker vessels. So I was offshore almost always, and we're doing that stuff. That's when I understood the, the dynamics of tide, tide. Because in order for us to take, fiscalize and take inventory, um, the tide must be at its peak so that our calculations will not be wrong. That's where I, I stumbled on one of the tools, which is the tidal chart, and I got a lot of insight from that. But are you, are you with me? Who, who is reading the first scripture? Oh, my God. I was asking for help. That was why I said it should. Yes? Hey, 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 wait. Which scripture are you reading? No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, I'm coming. Let me be sure that I gave you the right scriptures. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Good. Yes, 2 verse 15. You're right. Let's start again. These men are not drunk. As you suppose. The third hour. Now, can we, what does that mean? The third hour of the day. What does it mean? Do you have a Bible that gives us insight into what time we're talking about? What? 9 a.m. So you write, write 9 a.m. Yes, next scripture. So this third hour of the day was a time that the Holy Spirit came down on the day of Pentecost. Is that clear? Right. We are talking about praying without ceasing. That's, what I'm, that's where I'm going. Yes? Who has the second scripture? Acts 10.3. At about three in the afternoon, this Cornelius. Cornelius had an encounter with an angel, and the time of that encounter, according to human timing, was what? Three in the afternoon. That's 3 p.m. Okay, so we have the first one's what? 9 a.m. Then we have something for 3 p.m. Yes? Who is reading another scripture there? And drew near the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray. He went up on the housetop to pray. About the sixth hour. About the sixth hour. What time is that? Twelve noon. That was when he had the encounter uh, that something from heaven descended and all of that and all of that. and all. So look at that very well. You see we have twelve noon. We have nine. We have three. So it's a three, three, three hours interval. Good. So this is the technology. You want to shift, you want to move the hand of darkness back? 
you must start 12 midnight. You do 12 to 1. You do 3 to 4. You do 6 to 7. You do 9 to 10. And you continue running like that. If you do that, you will migrate. Keep that routine. Keep that routine. Something from God's realm will come into that cycle. It's guaranteed. It's something I do. When I notice that hell has broken loose, 12 to 1. I can, if, if the anointing is still on me for prayer, I can continue. But my contract is 12 to 1. Then I can go and sleep. And then do what? 3 to 4. If the anointing is on me, I will allow it to run. Then I, I, I move again. I move again. You will see God's hand will come into that cycle. It maintain that cycle. His hand will come. That, that's how we receive angelic visitations. Create a time that is based on this routine and God will come into it. The heavens will be open. The Holy Ghost will come down and you can hear the, 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 the voice of God clearly or God will send you an, an angel. Angelic intervention is occasioned by this continuous prayer cycle. Prayer was made without ceasing from the church. A certain man of God that was in my city died. It was when he died that we knew what he was. We normally see him on pulpits and in the crusade. And he has, he, he does this crusade, annual crusade that is massive. But we never knew what he was until he died. We never knew the kind of covering that came over the city because he was alive. It is easy for you to compare yourself to somebody. Because your estimation of the person is what you see him do on the pulpit. Ministry is not pulpit stuff. It's a call to priesthood. It will swallow your life. It's a call to an altar. And the altar is a metaphor for sacrifice. So when this man died, darkness began to come over our city gradually. I'm not saying we're not praying, no. But I'm saying that there was a capacity that that man had that made it easy for the territory. And many times, God knows that some people with capacity are about to be called home, and he begins to trouble other people to begin to take steps to migrate so that the kind of capacity they had in the spirit, the, 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 the outgoing generation, can be built in other functionaries that will still remain on ground so that darkness will not take advantage. Because I've seen cities like Benin, when a mighty apostle of God rose and he, he, he did damage to the kingdom of darkness. And when he was taken, there was nobody around that could command the kind of priesthood that he had. Guess what will happen? Darkness comes over the city and the darkness can linger. Maybe there's a priest in your family, someone that is holding the fault. And many times, this devil makes people not to like such people. It turns the hearts of people against such people that are holding the fault. Uh, if you understand spiritual things, you just know what is happening to you is the opposite of the truth. It will make people hate you if you're an intercessor. So you need to, you need to love them beyond their misunderstanding. And fulfill your ministry. This man was taken from our city. And when he was taken from our city, darkness began to come over the land. I was in final year when he died. And I never knew that God was going to send me to that city. But we had this small prayer group. And God began to say that the time of darkness was coming. And the darkness will last until a new light will rise from among us. Do you know that the most accurate, in my own opinion, and I speak as a man, okay? The most accurate word of God in that time was not on the big pulpit. The most accurate word of God was in little prayer groups where the Holy Spirit had liberty 
to express his heart. And God gave us that signal that the darkness was coming. But we could not imagine what measure of darkness God was talking about. The darkness was in the fact that somebody was about to be taken home and there was nobody on ground that understood the dynamics of the priesthood that brought light to the territory. And the moment this man was withdrawn from the scene, it was obvious that the things he had built in the spirit, there was no one that knew how to chart his course through the maze of the spiritual edifice that had been built by his life in the Lord. Satan took over everything. When I started my work life after campus, I got posted to the same city. Occultic pastors had taken over the pulpit, prophesying by divination. The spirit that was at work was what Apostle Paul called Python in the book of Acts chapter 16. Priesthoods that were serviced by immorality. All kinds of gimmicks, manipulations. And it was just a few years after the man died that the intensity of darkness was so heavy. And God began to speak to me. The reason why you were posted, because from my office, they posted me to that my city again. <laughs> the reason why you were posted here is so that you can, you can bear the candlelight. So we started praying. Kaboko sakaba kaba kaba There were creatures like dwarfs that used to visit my house. I know you will not believe. You say, okay, this guy is from Africa. So. Ah, okay. Since you won't believe, let me leave my story. <laughs> Creatures like dwarves that used to visit the room. That was a house that you might just see something. This house that I'm speaking about is sealed. You know what I mean by sealed? I, I, I assure you, sealed. And then I just came out of the room and saw a frog in my living room. All right, so I, I wanted to kill it. The thing just jumped and, and disappeared. I know you won't believe it. Say, this, this, African boy, this African boy has come again. I said, what is this? So in order for me not to be afraid, I'll have to pray for like three hours. Then fate will be stirred up. Fate will be stirred up. I was very, very single then. So... All I knew how to do was walk, and when I come back from walk, prayer. I continue. I continue. My neighbors now saw me praying and started joining me. People heard my prayer and started joining. That was how we started the prayer that became the ministry I'm doing today. I was on my knees when Jesus walked through the wall and gave me six signs that will happen before the blanket of darkness over the city is taken away. Each one of them came to pass. And the last of which was that the airport that was grounded in my city had it to become functional again. That was the last, that was the sixth one. And we followed it. And the more we gained ground with prayer, the more even, even the politics in the land shifted. Prior to that time, occultic people were the people sitting on that throne. And then we got a tongue talker to sit. It was because the atmosphere priesthood had made it possible. So the devil started losing ground. Even the, even the um, traditional stools, you know, we have something called, uh, we, have, we have offices, we have administrations built around our traditions. So we have chiefs. All the chiefs in that place are tongue talkers. It was intercession that created the atmosphere. And this is preparatory to something major that is about to happen in that city. That's how change takes place. Prayer was made. It was deliberate. It was conscious. Without ceasing of the church. Or oh, you think it's your computer that will, that will change something? The, the analysis that you are doing. We did all of that analysis in the oil industry and the darkness that was still in the land all our projections never came to pass all our interpolations never came to pass because of the darkness that was in the land it was obvious that God had made us a wealthy nation but the world could not be seen 
God never intended that anyone in that land will be a poor man, but the poverty is, is, is palpable. It is because of the darkness. So when we got this and we saw that you can break from a season of darkness as an individual into light with more stature and more capacity, we now discover that you can do that territorially, that we can decide that London, Satan will pack from London. Yes, we can decide. If you, keep, if you keep sowing the seed of prayer, you'll begin to see the day star. The morning will begin to down. Oh, some things that were possible before in the land will no longer be possible because the priests of light have come into the territory. I came, I came to charge you up. We are in the season of a watchman. We are in the season of the watchman. This you're eating. You eat chicken, eat chicken. No. Wake up. Wake up. It's time for us to migrate. Great things are determined by heaven, but it will take watchmen to download them. I've seen the power of prayer. If the power of prayer is in its consistency. Stay consistent. It may not make sense. Just keep the routine. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep striking. Keep striking. Keep striking. Keep striking. Keep striking. And things will break. I saw the darkness of my city break. I left Supernatural Ship 2020. Went back home. The first thing that happened to me was the pressure to leave my job. I left. I obeyed God. And then I noticed that the anointing Increase because I obeyed. Okay. Ah, then I preached. 80 sermons after I left here. Those 80 sermons, oh my. Was an announcement. Are you with me? And from that time, so many people across the world began to listen to me. I said, eh. Okay. In the city where I am, in the state where I am, the economy of the state is such that he cannot capture the things that God began to do. God took us beyond the economy of the location. Such that when the governor came to our building, we gave him the microphone, he said, huh? he forgot himself. He, he didn't know the world was watching him. Huh? That, so this thing happened in my territory and my money is not even in it. And that was good. It was good he made that statement because people thought it was a government-funded project. Uh, he said, my money is not in it. I was so happy. I said, glory to God. <laughs> Do you know that... So <laughs> you can make impossible things happen in your territory. <laughs> Tonight, God is going to... Cons you see, a rain will come upon you. Yes. There is a rain that is going to come upon you. Because many things are going to shift. You see, if you open your heart tonight, oh my, the energy that it takes to be consistent in the place of prayer until you see a change will come upon your life. In the name of Jesus. We are the ones that can change the tempo, change the situation, change the circumstance. Satan is not in control. It's not in control. It's not in control. They tried to kill me, but I'm still here. I'm still, I'm still here. And I'm more determined than, than I used to be. This encounter with me resolved the issue of determination. If you are still here, I'd like us to take a moment in prayer. See, the prayer we are praying is that God will do something to you, to do something to me in the next five minutes that will increase your capacity, that will set you on course, on a definite course of migration. A definite course. Oh. On a definite course. Prayer was made without ceasing of the church. And things began to shift. Angels were dispatched. All kinds of things began to happen. Peter thought it was a rescue strategy. He wanted to run out of prison naked. The angels say, hold it. Put on your sandals. They say, hold it. Guard yourself. Throw your robe over your arm. It, it, it's a red carpet reception. It's not a rescue strategy. 
the angelic activities that are soon to be activated around your life oh my god oh my god Simon Colemite Cofacito Braske Famante Curia that there are things that are opening up there are dimensions that God is unleashing on your life you are going through a migration by the spirit of God there is transport there is transport there is transport there is transport that is taking place my kobilasi rombela isko bamande Kuvevavanis kofres keta mantoria amaski do bronde kabaratus Rakosiko braskito kombelama akai kompis kavala mandeli lisko prekotiza zanatoa there's a migration taking place god is moving you as i speak there is a movement there is a movement the tsunami of shift is coming to take over the affairs of your life what might happen might look like a dislocation but it is so that you can be relocated and brought into the full context of your destiny i see the hand of god straight forth already it's straight forth already oh god like a simoro pescadi abraske falama sika braska taboboriata is complete things will never be the same again kaboria simo on pelakusa akabosa sale braska itoko belame ubreske folom braske akuva lata kumenale sombre ke tela somalate avai to kombres kuvas kame aramas ke tia bonde mala somalaita thank you lord in the name of jesus the lord will anoint seven people seven people now this anointing this anointing will will shift you yeah seven significant people in this auditorium and the hand of god comes already it comes as i speak already it's coming stronger already there are seven people that will be anointed seven people will be anointed his hand will just descend the migration starts with that anointing the migration it starts with that anointing it's coming 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 there's a migration there's a shift there's a shift the lord himself the lord himself is 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 involved he's involved in occasion in this migration he's in oh my god but who say come in i eat it Rukas came in a celiboboria. Ama Marasi, Compresco Falatua, Acabresco Velame, Zalico Palamaita, Ecobrescu Valla Hasimo, Prehicos Cabaratua. Ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I see someone under the torment of the spirit of death. The spirit of death has been coming close to you, near you, has been showing you all kinds of intimidating. Uh, visions and dreams and and uh, it, it, it has saturated your heart uh, you because of your you yielded to the intimidation a gateway has been opened and there's an economy of darkness that is already beginning to take hold but as i speak now in the next 12 12 seconds the hand of god will come upon please bring that person bring her bring her bring her because we need to cast that spirit out we need to cast it out we need to cast it out Asaimo Karados Escoba Bilaita Komena Asamena Korea is a soup is a season of supernatural shift and God is shifting you, He's shifting you. Oh, the same way He shifted me. He's shifting you. Bring that person, bring that person quickly. We banish the hold of that spirit of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. Or we'll banish the hold. Or we'll banish the hold. Or we'll banish it. Or we'll banish it. Or we'll banish it in the name of Jesus. Yes, you are released from that hold. Or we'll 
banish it. Oh, we'll banish it. We'll banish it. We'll banish it. We'll break it. We'll break it. Psycho Balina. Can you speak in tongues for two minutes, please? Two minutes, two minutes. He says, say more calling at the Labros Compella Madaka. A man said, Coria Barana Sico, Ombre Catacumbes Camai, Caposcati. Ah, 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 ah. I'm seeing a gate. A gate is opening. A gate is opening. A gate is opening. There is a lifting for the Liberty Church. The Lord is, is opening a gate. A gate. A gate. The voice from this house will travel. Will travel further. It will pierce deeper. Oh my God. I see a gate open in the spirit. Zemo kopresi kopatwala. Asino moredis. Presco fande mamai compatu palezo sele lico pandos comenadi alama hasaka brasketo maliada mahande. Oh, aliamo mosico, liamo mosico, racos cante mila, sai compres la macande. Oh, my God, we give you praise, we give you praise. We give you praise. The shift begins. It begins. It begins. It begins. The movements, the migrations. It begins. It begins. It begins. It begins. It comes stronger. It comes stronger. La bossi cope calante. Ibra mama sacuate. I cosqueto boco boco sima. Apri mas cante bora. Demons of resistance, they are cut off tonight. They are cut off tonight. We are cut off tonight. We mount up with wings like the eagles. We mount up like the eagles. We mount up like the eagles. We mount up in the name of Jesus. We mount up. Oh, we thank you. In Jesus' name. I see a hand stretched forth like this and, uh, and the Lord wisdom speaks to me that uh, there is someone that God is going to place the healing anointing on your hand. You will sense it. Don't worry. You sense it. It's, it's a radical anointing. 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 There's a gate that is open. There's a gate that is open. There is a gate open. There is a gate open. There's a gate that is open. There's a gate. There's a gate open. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. The hand of the Lord comes upon it. It comes strong. Comes strong upon it. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. The hand of God. It comes stronger. It comes stronger from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. It comes stronger upon you. It comes stronger. It comes stronger. It comes stronger. It comes stronger. Yes, yes. The shift has begun for you. The shift. The shift has begun. The migration. The movement starts now. It starts now. Oh my God. Hello. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice. Begin to speak to the Lord concerning the shift. God is, is bringing about a shift in your life and destiny out of darkness into the light. I want you to pray for the next two minutes. Two minutes for the shift. The same way the apostles prayed. When, dark, when, when, when darkness was looming and death was loom, looming and hanging over the life of Peter, when prayer had not been made, the darkness took James. And so it is possible for darkness to take a person prematurely. There are people who are, are under siege in their family 
under siege in their in their lives. Makoto parasi take para. Open your mouth. Just lift a, a prayer altar. Just begin to lift incense right now. And let's begin to ask for the spirit of prayer and supplication to rest upon our lives. Let there be an impartation right now. Mantaraba. Jesus said to watch and pray. Watch and pray. It's almost like as though Apostle Session is praying to bring about a shift. My session is about watching. And so we are praying that in the name of Jesus, Kadebaro Soto Para. Mesquite para that the spirit, the grace to watch and pray, the grace to watch and pray, so that when the sword is coming, we can pick it up and pray to, to turn and avert the the, judge, the, 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 the the assignment of the sword away. The Bible says in Ezekiel 33, verse 3, hey, that I've placed a watchman over your walls, over your city. Marakatakada. So that when he sees the sword coming, Manta, he blows the trumpet. Lord, in the name of Jesus, make us sensitive to the signs of danger and give us the grace and the spirit to, to, to prevail in prayer in the place of consistency. Karabarus. Help us to catch fire in the place of prayer. That the sword will not take anybody before away before their time. Those of us online, let's lift up our voice. There is a grace and a spirit that is that is being released upon this place right now in this atmosphere. Receive that grace to pray such that when darkness wants to come and take someone before their time, hey, that the spirit of grace and supplication will come upon you. Mantaraba, to tarry in the place of prayer. Until the thing shifts away. Maroso tokepara. Marasata kataba. Mesoto kadeba. God give us the grace to pray until the assignment is deleted, not just diverted, delayed or deferred. Makoto pare katese. Maroso to palikale. Rasata kata. Oh, resete ke parabara. Hey, rebaraba. Rebas. We serve notice to the spirits of darkness. Reseke deba. We decree and declare that as it is said that the kingdom of God has suffered violence, now the violent and the militant in prayer are taking back territory by force. We decree and declare that the territory of our family is being taken, even from tonight. We draw the line and we say, no more shall you push us back into death. No more shall you push us back into depression, divorce, defilement. Rebatoko pare katesite. We release fire, fire, fire over every household, over every single person here represented. The same way tons of fire was released on the day of Pentecost. We receive the grace to pray. Fire in the Holy Ghost. Lord, from amongst us, raise watchmen intercessors. Raise prophetic intercessors, not just for our families, for our churches, for our cities. Genuine intercessors. Rosoto parekete, me rosoto para, marakata reba, vekite santa, roba tu sopale, meskite baros, mentoroboro, resikete, marasataka, vevusata katetesi, vavusanta de, roboro bariska, mentorobare. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Father Lord, we thank you for the great thing you started in our lives. We thank you, Father Lord, that that which has been spoken tonight, Father Lord, will serve as a reminder daily in our hearts to keep us in that place of fervent prayer continuous, ceaseless prayer that in the name of Jesus that not too long from now that darkness will be pushed back from every family here represented and those online in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Come on, give the Lord a powerful hand clap for Apostle and his, and be seated in, and his, in his presence for a minute.